You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Gail Godfrey. Gail is the author of A Paranormal Reader, which is available at mereweedpress.com. In her book, she recounts real-life tales of the supernatural. Given a scientific mind, she compares the invisible realms to those we can measure. Gail was gracious enough to do the show tonight on short notice, so we're all going to find out more about her tonight, right now. So let's welcome her to the show. Hi, Gail. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Lance, and uh, thanks so much for for inviting me on on short notice. Um, oh, it's my pleasure. I, I, you know, I it's a I love to talk about this stuff, and you know, uh, I'm curious to find out how you uh, ended up becoming so aware of so many different things, aspects of the paranormal, and uh, the most uh, practical place to start would be finding out how you arrived at writing a book such as the one you wrote. <clears throat> well, um, the, the, the genesis of it is is a, a bit bewildering. I, I will... Um, tell you first that it's a very diverse book we we um our i cover m- remarkable feats of mediumship um pre precognition clear audience these were all mystic visions mystic experiences um traditional hauntings ghostly encounters and these were all uh true life accounts that were uh relayed to me and and i i felt had some qualitative weight to them mm-hmm. um but what was so interesting was um what compelled me to write it first of all which was um uh, shall i tell you yes yes please <laughs> um it all started at uh, 4.45 in the morning on um, February 10th, 2011. I was uh, awakened uh, in my mind by a male voice that said some very personal things, very, very avuncular, kind words to me, words of advice. And um, I certainly bolted awake, and I said, what? in the world was that. <laughs> and, um, but then um, got out of bed at 5 a.m. like I normally do and really put it out of my mind and said, gee, that was a bit strange, and, and then left, left the house at, at 6 a.m., turned out of the driveway, uh, go to the stop sign, look in the air, about 35 feet up in the air, is a huge triangular craft. Oh. Now, I, 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 certainly, I imagined it was it was connected to to this piped in voice, land uh. that I could almost feel where it was resonating in in my in my head, mm-hmm. um, and it, it did have the. Um, the effect of I, I sensed that it was almost radioed in, but be that as it may, I, I look up at this craft and I said, "I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I'm not getting out of the car, but I am going to observe this and 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 study it very very carefully." But be that as it may, I, I drove off, got on my bus to New York, and and actually put it out of my mind in the rest of the day, but I found that I suddenly, after seeing this, had this overwhelming compulsion to start collecting stories, start writing down my stories, and 
and um, in an effort to help people, to help people who are non-believers, who can only begin to recognize the fact that there are other dimensions if we speak to them in concrete terms that will resonate with them. Mm. Each reader is individual. Everyone thinks differently. They learn differently. They process information differently and have um, a different emotional makeup. Um, therefore, the, the, that, that addresses the, the diversity of topics in the book. Um, but I simply started writing down my own experiences, which were predominantly based in um, my history of being um, tremendously empathic. If, if, I, if there is a roaming spirit in a building or on a property, I'll, I'll bump into it, mm-hmm. and I'll know it's there <laughs> mm-hmm. for, yeah, for better. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, so, uh, then I started asking others, well, tell me your stories, but I, I didn't give them guidance. I didn't say, well, I, I need so many in this category. I just asked them to, to speak as, as they wished. And, and then I, I recounted these stories and collected them. And, um, my hope is, is that it will sway some non-believers, and, um, of which there are many, in, at least in my environment. Oh, yes. You live in New Jersey? Uh, yes, outside of New York, about 20 uh, miles west. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, you know, the other thing that's important about your, your work and uh, getting this information available is <clears throat> for those other people who have had experiences, some many experiences from childhood all through adulthood, some just intermittent, who are afraid to talk about these things because they don't want anybody to think they're crazy. Well, it's very funny because, I, <laughs> of course, I told my, um, my, my sisters who, who live close by about uh, the, the triangular craft, and their first um, reaction was, don't tell the neighbors. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, I, say, so. I, I would say the opposite. I would say scream it from the rooftops because the more people talk about these things, the more we have in common and the more we can share them. And then it's not such a horrifying reality or a shocking reality when, the, when it shows up for everybody. Yes, yes. You know, there, there is an inevitable moment in time when we will be uh, able to have co- open contact with other uh, extraterrestrial races. And I believe that this has been going on for hundreds and thousands of years. Oh, undoubtedly, so, yes, yes. Yeah, and the it's pretty well documented that the governments of the nation have had interactions and that we're you know, pretty much being told that, uh, you know, don't look over here, there's nothing to look at. But the reality is that it is here, it has been here, and um, everybody has some element of an extraterrestrial or alien uh, blood or gene in them. So Mm -hmm. I say they're among us, and it's time that we get over our uh, fears and belief systems and embrace the idea. There's nothing to be afraid of. If there's fear involved, then it's usually coming from the forces that want to keep us dumbed down and enslaved. So, that, anyway, that's my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, certainly I've, I've done subsequent research, my, but my first reaction was, oh, my goodness, this is this, of course, this is extraterrestrial. Mm-hmm. However, um, as you know, our government has been... Um, cooperating with the governments of other countries. And and as far as I know, we have um, craft that are capable of, yes, yes. and and this very much, this very well may have been one of them. Ironically, a half a mile away is is an airport that used to be a... um, 
uh, an air development center during World War II, oh. and, and there is a defense contractor there. Oh, so, well, yeah. there exactly. you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This may just have been um, <laughs> connected with that. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, but regardless, the voice... And and it was directed to me. I, that is quite confounding, and and this almost compulsion to write this book immediately after mm. this experience is is somewhat unexplainable. But be that as it may, I I so enjoyed collecting these stories. They they were they were touching, and um, my great hope is that. Um, those people who tell me, well, I'm not a believer, mm-hmm. and um, we'll, we'll perhaps read these, and, and, and there is a quantifiable aspect to them. Um, in other words, um, the words spoken by mediums, the facts, the, 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 the names, the dates, are, are statistically not only improbable but but almost impossible to come come forth with at random mm-hmm. and and I hope that re- some uninitiated readers, certainly your audience are all believers, but right. <laughs> <laughs> those neighbors, those coworkers we have who are not believers, perhaps would respond to a book like this because it it is written in simple concrete terms there are no higher level channeled writings there's no talk of 12 dimensions and mm. and palladians and, and right. the things that you and I they're dear to our hearts but right right <laughs> um so it it is intentionally written on on a simple level nice um nice. um now this is um gosh we we have so many avenues to go down uh, there is the the aspect of the mediumship there is the aspect of the the um ghostly encounters the clear audience is, is there um is there a topic that you would like me to address well you know a lot of people uh talk about <clears throat> Beings, uh, beings of light in their uh, vicinity, and spirit guides, the higher self, and using those terms, and so that is mm-hmm. one of the areas we could explore. And also, uh, it's been made. Aw- I've been made aware that there is a dark, uh, a, a dark light, false paradigm, which has the ability to project an image of light, and they are not necessarily beings of light. So, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So those are all areas that we can talk about. I know a, a close friend of mine has hundreds and maybe thousands by now of orb pictures that are just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's another little phenomenon that's going on. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. how? what are some of the encounters that you have discovered that were of an unearthly nature that were more interesting to you? Well, just to say quickly, I, I, I orb hunt, I call it orb hunting with my senses. Um, ah. but, but that is almost another con- conversation. Right. I, I do want to a- address the, the issue of the voices because that, that is something I do have experience with. And, and okay. it, it, I categorize them in, in, Almost three categories. There, there was that very strange piped-in voice that mm-hmm. only happened to me once, and and it was it was um, clearly radioed in. Uh-huh. Um, but when we consider we have piezoelectric crystals within our pineal gland, in our brain, mm-hmm. and that the heart and soul of old-fashioned crystal radio mm-hmm. is crystal, then one may consider that, that this is a possibility. But mm-hmm. um, let me talk about the, the benign, helpful, higher self, higher level voices Great. that um, the earliest uh, 
story I know of this happened to my my mother when she was when she was a young mother in the in the 1950s. Um, she had moved into my family had moved into a, a neighborhood where where lots of houses were going up. This was after the war. And she was busy in the garden, and she had her back turned to the street. And um, she didn't know it. Um, well, all of a sudden, she heard a very loud voice in her in her in her mind's ear, in 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 her, inside of her mind, say, "Turn around now." Mm. And she did. And my three year old, my sister, who was three years old at the time was uh had her tricycle in the middle of the road and and it was far from the garden my mother just threw down her tools started running and at that point a huge dump truck started coming around the bend at the top of the hill and started barreling toward my sister it could not stop my mother just kept running and in a hair's breadth saved my sister's life mm. now um a we say what was that was was that a a, a spirit guide was that a higher self was mm-hmm. that an angel what was that was that the helpful dead um and and I do have an opinion on that but in the meantime let me give you one other um example um mm-hmm. from my book um I had moved to New York from Philadelphia where I was living in the mid 90s and um I was every night after dinner I would race up 3rd Avenue to to get a swim in at the pool after dinner mm. and I was barreling up 3rd Avenue and I was looking in the store windows and and I was not cognizant of, of anyone or anything around me and all of a sudden, a very loud voice in my brain, again, inside of my head, said, turn around. Same wording, turn around. And, and I, I ignored it. I was in a rush. I, I had to get to the pool. So, and, I, and by that time, I was looking at my, my reflection in the mirror in the store window. I was, I was busy. But, um, Lance, it came back loudly. And it said, uh, turn around. And I, it was so loud, I stopped in my tracks. Uh, turned to my left, and there was this very lovely man standing there who, who, who looked at me as though he knew me. It was, uh, it was uncanny. And, and he stopped in his tracks, and, and I stopped in my tracks. And needless to say, he was a very significant friend from there, from that point on. Um, but, I was um, baffled by exactly what that was for a long time, and and I was mentioning it to a, a woman by the name of Mary Swanson, who's a well-known intuitive counselor in in, in uh, San Francisco, and and highly respected for for very for very good reasons. Mm-hmm. And I said, Mary, what was that? And she said, That was your higher self. Mm-hmm. But I was confused i uh, until i wrote this book i was confused about the definition of higher self and i bumped into a vague reference in a book that just came out at the end of uh last year called the flip side by richard martini and what richard did was that he patiently listened to many uh, tapes and many live regression sessions with people who, uh, um, going through the Michael Newton Institute oh. who were describing their their life, their decisions, their thought process between lives. Oh, and right. a number of his subjects reported that only 35% of your soul is reborn. The remainder remains in the spirit plane to study, to develop, and to guide the lower self. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so that was that resonated with me. Yes. 
Yes, um, I, I, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, there, but now, now on to the pe- pesky voices. The uh, okay. <laughs> lower, lower entities. Um, I, I do have many other examples of, of higher level voices, but but I, I think those those were were constructive. Oh, um, yeah. When I was a teenager. Um, I must admit, I, I played with Ouija boards, and I, I played with little little magic tricks, um, and, I, and I shouldn't have. And, and I inadvertently, um, I believe, invited in some lower order entities, and they arrive if you invite them in, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. as you know, All right. <laughs> And we, we do that usually unconsciously. We, we think yeah. we're, we're playing. Um, we think this Ouija board is fun. We think these tarot cards are, are, are instructive. And, and many, many people use tarot cards um, very safely, but um, I was not able to. But be that as it may, um, whether it was the, the tarot, whether it was my, my little love spell to make this boy... Um, notice me. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> Something happened, and um, uh, there was a time last year when, or I beg your pardon, it was the year before, when I was um, intensively meditating. I said, I really need to work harder on my meditation skills, and. On a daily basis, I would meditate for an hour, and and Lance, I would ride that magic carpet ride, and I would go on trips, and and um, they were terrific meditations. Mm-hmm. But the downside was that I suddenly started hearing um, external voices, not a voice inside my head, uh. external voices calling my name, huh. in in a sing-song, teasing, pesky way. And, oh. um, yeah, it freaked me out, to say the least. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's not a good thing. No, uh, no. I think clearly the, the, the difference between the two, the, the two aspects is that the, the higher voices are always going to be bringing attention to something that is life-threatening or beneficial or something that is a soul message. Yes. And the lower voices are almost always going to be taking us down a path that is recycling, some kind of recurring uh, energetic attachment that creates more things that we need to have to let go of later. So... uh, it, it just kind of seemed clear that these benign voices are easy to identify in their positive nature. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, they they seek to help, they seek to save, guide. Um, another pesky thing that the <laughs> lower order entities were doing is um, knocking three times. Have you ever heard of that? No. That little trick, yeah, well, that's a no. classic. Um, oh. And um, knocking at my door three times, and, and Uh-oh. yeah, and finally I called a, a spiritual counselor out in California, um, Doctor Bruce Goldberg. I don't know if you've heard his name, but he's no, I pre- but predominantly known for for. Past life progression, uh, past life regressions, future life progressions. Oh. But he is also quite adept and and has great understanding of um, the low lower spiritual plane. And mm. so he took me through a guided meditation, almost a hypnosis, and um, it was quite interesting. It was quite an interesting process. Um, while this was happening, I clearly saw blue light surrounding me, going whooshing round and round and round. Mm. Um, but be, to make a long story short, he, he rid me of them, 
They have not come back. But it it, it, it was annoying, to, to say mm. the least. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so, so hopefully my my book will will be of help to people. But but one of my main um, thoughts was that now you and I and and all of your listeners um, do pay close attention to to channeled words and and. Um, um, words of um, to to explain ascension and and uh, the matrix, but there are still people amongst us who don't even believe that there is one other dimension out, you know, beyond their granite countertop. Mm, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You've noticed. Yes, much to my chagrin. Uh, and, um, it's the majority of the of the population on the planet. It would seem sometimes it seems that way. Does it? Yeah, it really does. But um, so I thought, well, perhaps if they read some of these in, encounters with with mediumship, they can see how quantifiably um, improbable it 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 is for. Um, a medium to to come up with um, with a fact, an obscure fact, and and f- for example, um, when, when I was married, um, my ex husband and I went for a, a walk in Georgetown. We were living in Washington at the time, and um, I came upon a little church with a sign outside that it said, and, and it said "Spiritualist Church of the Two Worlds." And I and services Sunday at two o'clock, and I thought, "Gosh, what's this?" Hmm. Well, the following Sunday, his parents were due in from England, and and he was going to spend some time with them alone. So I thought, "Okay, I'll go to this this church." Um, I, I went there, and it, it was a church like any other, and and um, there was a there were prayers, but um, what was very interesting was that the organist said that she had never heard the music that she was playing. She was simply channeling it, and it was new to her. So I thought oh. that was that was amusing. But the woman, the minister behind the the podium, started giving messages, and and up until that time, I hadn't really known what the um about the concept of of messages from from the spirit realm on the other side well she came to me and she said you <laughs> can may i come to you and i said yes of course she said olive sends her greetings olive sends says that an important anniversary has just passed and she wants to to uh, to mark that well i said oh Thank you, but it was it was a bit disingenuous because I I, I had no idea I I didn't know any Olive who had passed mm. on. Okay. Well, that evening, um, it, um, my husband and I were were having dinner with his parents in this little little house where they were staying in Georgetown, and um, we were having dinner, and I was just babbling on about my day, and I was telling my husband. And then she came to me, and she said, Olive sends her greetings. Um, and he said, Olive? What an odd name. And I said, I don't know an Olive. He said, I don't know an Olive. And his parents went ashen. Oh. And his father put down his fork, and they became terribly silent. And finally, his mother um, said to him in, in her very precise BBC English, um, said, darling, you, you do know that you're adopted. And he said, yes. And she said, well, we've never told you this, but your mother's real name was Olive. Oh, and, my. And, um, you know, it, it was your 30th birthday was two weeks ago, and we picked you up at the um, orphanage, um, after you were two weeks old, 
Um, years ago, people thought it was best for babies to be cared for by their real mothers for the first two weeks. Mm-hmm. So Olive cared for you. And that Sunday, um, washed all your clothes, laundered your clothes, left the orphanage in the morning, and we came to pick you up in the afternoon. Hmm. Now, statistically, it is absolutely impossible unless you can research somewhat ahead of time and, and, and... these people at, at the Spiritualist Church had never seen me before. Mm-hmm. I knew nothing about this fact. And so uh, the book is filled with um, uh, encounters that, that I feel have significance and, and hopefully will sway the uninitiated very much like that story. Um, but but there are others. There there are tales of ghostly visits, precognition, um, a lovely tale of a, a, a mystic encounter with um, a blue lady. Now that's interesting. <clears throat> um, there are a lot of references to the blue lady, and of course we have the movie Avatar, and the Hindu gods were blue, and there are references throughout uh, many spiritual literatures of a divine blue being. What was your tale about the blue lady? Um, a lovely woman by the name of Lisa who, who lives along the um, Hudson River in New York, New York State, contributed this one. Um, when she was a little girl growing up in Texas, um, she started to see um, a figure, a, a, a blue figure forming by her closet door every night and and she would she was only seven years old and she would would scream and 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 carry on and run into her mother well it it got so bad that her mother said listen this has to stop the next time the lady comes just remain calm and 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 walk into my room well the following night the, this this figure began to appear again but this time, it moved out of the closet, it moved to the foot of her bed, and it took form. And what Lisa could see was that it was a beautiful young woman with a blue uh, scarf over her head. Uh-huh. And um, she said, well, I, I promised my mother I'd remain calm, and, and um, I have to remain calm, but but I, I want to see my mother. The problem is she would have had to have run through the apparition. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, as she did that, she said she had to stop. When she entered the apparition, she stopped dead in her tracks. Um, she was encircled with tiny lights, tiny lights flowing around and around her, and she said she was enveloped in the most exquisite peace and love that that she could possibly imagine, and, and she said the air felt as though it does when lightning strikes. Ah. Huh. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, now, you and I would, I, I would take that to, to the next level and say, well, this is probably a, a fifth dimension manifestation, a, a, a Palladian um, coming to us um, as a representation of good. But my intent in including this um, this story is perhaps to. Um, to speak to those with with traditional religious views, and uh, uh, here is a manifestation that is real and and tangible, and um, suggests another dimension. Mm-hmm. Um, so so there is a plethora of of accounts in 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 many forms in the book. Uh, what about angelic encounters, the beings that definitely appear to be 
uh, uh, like angels with wings and uh, oh yes. Do you have what about that? I'm very glad you asked. Um, I did want to mention that uh, that that's another concrete um, example. Um, I, I'm have a cousin who who's my age, uh, and and um, she, uh, gosh, it was about eight years ago now. Um, one one Saturday afternoon, she was in New York State. She lives in Pennsylvania now, and she was. Close to um, where her 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 grandparents had had once lived, and so she said, "Let's just let me stop by." And she was with her boyfriend, and said, "Let me let me look at the old house," and and she did, and and um, she was able to walk around the property a bit, and she asked him to take a photograph of her um, in front of the front door. Well. It, 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 he, it's a point-and-shoot camera, and, and it was on low res, and neither of them is, is adept at, at photography. And they threw the camera in the car, and they went home. Well, she was downloading the photographs, and she said, gosh, there's a wisp of something over my head. Huh. Um, I wonder what that is. And she mentioned it to uh, someone, and they said, well... Uh, why don't you send it to the woman who does your ads? Maybe she can lighten it, or, or maybe there's something she can do to to, um, to to analyze what this is. So she she sent it uh, the raw form of the image to the graphic designer, who simply in um, you you can lighten an image. That's basically it's called color correct, and you it, what it does is it lifts pixels and it lightens the image well an angel popped out and and um uh she sent it to me immediately and and i said nancy you made that up that is too perfect (laughs) this this Uh looks drawn this looks illustrated this is not a natural form and she said no gail I swear this is what has emerged over uh, this image. And and she sent me the original raw um, photograph. She downloaded it again from the camera. And and I sent it to my graphic person. And I said, just do the, just hit the color correction button where you lift the pixels, don't do anything more. And lo and behold... The angel emerged for us too. Wow! And it's in my book, and it's it's. I find that um, very grounding, very reassuring, and 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 a lovely concrete representation of of what we what we know in our hearts is there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I I love that. Um, what about people who see a spirit that uh, turn out to be somebody that was trying to communicate a message to somebody in particular? Well, I, I suppose the most relevant, um, there, there's an entire chapter devoted to one story in, in the book. It, it happened to me. Um, I should have known better. I, I was um, at a... I had to accompany some coworkers to a trade show in Saratoga, but but I wasn't manning the table, so I said, "All right, I'm going to visit the battlefield while you while you all are at the trade show." And I went by myself to the Saratoga battlefield, and I spent the whole day there, Lance. And and uh-huh. and there was nothing. I felt nothing. The air was clear, and and my defenses were down. Well, I get to marker 10 after um, visiting all of the markers, and I'm la-la-la going to visit ostensibly General Fraser's grave. Well, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I'm, I'm veered off the path, and I made a wrong turn, and, and I went down an obscure path down a ravine, and I, I knew very quickly that something was wrong. Um uh-huh. It was silent. It was it was darker, 
the, uh-huh. the air was oppressive. And uh, you, you know, you've been there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but then I, it, suddenly there was pandemonium around me. And, and in my mind's eye, I saw people running and, and, um, strangely skirts, women in skirts. You wouldn't uh. think that on a battlefield. And uh, and I could suddenly feel I had walked into a nest of spirits, uh, <laughs> and not just one, a nest. And and they were they were asking questions and they were panic stricken, and I I became panic stricken. But but I controlled my emotions. I realized what was happening, and I got to the bottom of the hill. Mm-hmm. Well. I braced myself, I surrounded myself in white light and chrome and and plowed my way up the hill. But and I got out of there quickly. But I said to myself, I'm revisiting that spot with mediums and, and we're gonna find out what happened. Oh. Well, I it wasn't easy you know you have what I call parlor mediums, people who, who very kindly sit in in their warm parlor connecting with with past loved loved ones who've passed on and there and there are mediums who are capable of communing with either earthbound spirits or 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 revisiting spirits uh-huh. well it took me a while but i found some, a very good couple of mediums to revisit the battlefield oh, nice. and they with me and ironically it was at about the anniversary of the of the battle, which the second battle, which was in oh. mid October, and they had um, tremendous insights um, into who was in that spot and why they were there, and um, basically, there uh, this one medium, Marge Kaufman's uh, con- opinion was was that it was uh, a, a a band of people. Um, she saw blue uniforms, oh. and uh, but but um, ironically, I later found out that they were not Americans. Um, she said they're frustrated. They're revisiting the the uh, a part of the battle that went badly for them, and and she relayed names and facts. Well, I later took Marge's. Um, uh, um, thoughts uh-huh. and and sent them on to the park historian, who was very kind, and uh, gave me his thoughts on Marge's thoughts. Uh-huh. And then I researched what could have happened in that particular spot. And um, but the bottom line is that this group, I I think. Um, was appealing to me because I'm I'm a Revolutionary War buff, and I they knew perhaps that I would research this point in this story to the last bullet, which I did, <laughs> and retell their story in my book, which I did, and um, spirits will reach out to people who they think can tell their story or they'll reach out to help them. Uh-huh. Um, there, there are many circumstances. It's a very complex issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. As you know. But, well, um, do yes, you feel please. That, do you feel that you were guided to, the, to these various places? That it, it, I'm beginning to get the sense that you were... Uh, truly, uh, with through with the invisible realms, that you were led on a, a kind of a mystical journey that was part of the process that was desired to have you create this book from the from outside of time and space. Yes. Yes. Do you, and you do you feel that you like you were led from one you know not necessarily in a linear fashion because we know. That there is no such time. That, that their time is not an, is a, not an existent thing. It's yes. a creation, mm-hmm. and we're in a quantum universe. So uh, these spirits are able to guide us outside of time 
in any moment that we need guidance for a specific purpose. Is that something that relates to what we're talking about? Yes. Uh, I mean, there there are many levels of an answer I can I can give, and and yes. and I'm still baffled by the the visit of that triangular craft and and why I was so compelled, almost like Richard Dreyfus in, um, what was that, Close Encounters, building his devil's, yes, devil's yes. tower in the dining yeah. room. Um, yes. Well, you know, and, one thing I, I yes. want to share with you really mm-hmm. quickly. I, I just, yes. When I had no idea that you had had any contact or any UFO experience, mm-hmm. uh because of the nature of the chapters in your book, mm-hmm. which all relate to mystical experiences and NDEs, animal Yeah, I don't mention it so in my on. book. Mm-hmm. And I often doodle when I'm talking to my guests. It's just my hand, my hand just does it. I, I write notes, uh-huh. I take notes, because I, I, I'm interested in learning about what my guests are sharing. And I'll, you mentioned three or four different things that I'm going to follow up on. But before you told that story, I had drawn a doodle that was in the shape of a kite. And Mm. it was a triangle, two Mm. triangles, and then there was a circle that joined the two, the right and left side. And then I was just kind of drawing a kind of like a, a, a line, like you might see on the freeway, from the top of the kite into the middle of a circle as if it was going down and there was a communication coming up from the bottom, and then you mentioned the triangle and feeling as if it had been beamed to you. And it, I, I couldn't have drawn anything more clear <laughs> without knowing it right before you shared that. So I just thought I'd say we have an, a, re, a demonstration of, what, of how this works now. Or, or what they call in remote viewing I, ideograms. I, I, ideograms. I, ideograms. Yeah, but you definitely have you definitely connected with the with non local consciousness there, and, and yeah. you were reading you were reading some realm. Yes, um, but I also feel I was pulled off the path that day in Saratoga, where oh. if I had gone to the right, I would have um, visited the marker. But I was drawn to an obscure path down a hill on the left. Oh. And, um, and why did they choose me? Why did they all pounce on me? Oh. And because there are other people visiting the park. Um, I wonder if they knew that I would tell their story. If they wanted their story told. Huh. Um, well, you know... Then again, that's a multi-dimensional complex. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it works on so many levels that it depends on how you want it, how how far up the ladder, or mm-hmm. uh, you know, where where you want to uh, connect to it. But uh, some people say that this everything <clears throat> on this level has already happened, and mm-hmm. we're basically being um, uh, kind of tweaked from from outside of time to have things mesh in a fluid dynamic manner it's kind of an organic process so that we're we're but we both have free will and yet we don't it's it's happened mm-hmm. and it hasn't yes yes so it's it's so important to be able to embrace paradox because it, that is part of what moving out of duality and the and the limited nature of a black and white thinking indicates and that is where we are going is being able to move into triality and multidimensionality and be able to tap into parallel lives, uh, past future lives. Um, I think very soon, uh, this is something you might want to comment about, is that uh, we are moving into a more empathic, uh, some people are moving into more empathic and telepathic communication. Do you feel that that is something that is opening up for more people at this time from what you can see? Certain people, select people. people. Yes, right, right. And, and I, I don't know what the criteria is, um, but certainly um, I, I interviewed a woman who communicates with 
and it took me a while. I was skeptical at first. Animals, telepathically. Oh, I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> I did. I did. And and I I'm um, so impressed by her skills. And she has skills I do not. I think we are all graced with um, different skills. And right, um, right, right. This is this is her gift. And, and who is this? Well, I, I call her Gwen in the book. Oh, okay. You know? Oh, okay. All right. And and we didn't have a chance to um, speak of her, but she's also uh, does spirit rescue, which is okay. which is actually a very complex subject in itself. And um, she was able to um, oh extend many many insights into into the spirit realm and and uh, the angelic realm and um how they interact and and how we uh as grounded beings on the third dimension can uh, what our role is in in um helping our friends whose spirits have not quite progressed onto wherever they go, their uh-huh. dimension. Uh-huh. But, uh, and was she was the one that spoke about the animal communication as well? Yes, she also communicates with animals, and um, they, um, they uh, um, um, wanted her to know that we're all connected, um, that connections never die, um, whether it is a, an owner to an animal who has passed on or one human being who has lost another, either through death or, or, or a sad parting, that energetically there is always a cord that connects and everyone and anyone who has 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 had a, a close connection. I mean, certainly we're we're all connected on a, on a consciousness level, and um, on a universal level. But there is a special connection between old friends and old lovers. And, oh yeah, mm-hmm. we can feel it. Oh yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, came to mind while you were talking was uh, something that I've experienced in numerous occasions. And uh, in one instance, I was actually living with somebody Mm -hmm. in which this happened. And it is when an angelic being or a higher dimensional being enters into a physical body to accomplish something or to communicate information. It may be five seconds at the the grocery store, or it may be, you know, a more personal interaction where you're actually taken through some of the things that you need to find out about. Is that something that you have uh, acquired some stories about? No, I did not bump into a story like that. But I, if we have time, let's hear yours. No. No. <laughs> I can't interview the host. <laughs> well, it's, it's just yes, telling. You can. Uh, yes, you can. Um, well, on, in one instance, I was uh, in a fairly, it was in San Francisco, and there was an old woman that got onto the bus, and as she was turn, as she was getting on, she seemed to change in energy, and she turned and looked right at me and said something to me personally that was very uplifting and positive, and then she turned away and seemed to be uh, returned to, you know, however it was that she was manifesting, but... I've had many self. instances of people uh, that I've been talking to, and something will come through through them. Uh, in one instance, I was talking to somebody who was doing a kind of a psychic foot bath uh, where I live here, and mm-hmm. she was giving me information, and then she told me some things that were so personal that there was no way that she... Uh, would have picked that up from from the physical thing that she was doing with the with the foot bath, and 
I asked her about that, and she didn't remember. She she had about ten minutes when she didn't remember, you know, what was what was said. So uh, it's often something that happens out of the blue, and an angelic being or a higher dimensional being will come in and manifest, and then, you know, they've accomplished their purpose. They've communicated what they needed to to communicate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Possibly like uh, the voice that uh, you have heard and many of us have heard that says something that stops us and we turn around and there's something that's life-changing uh, or life-saving. And they're oh, there was, insistent. There was one instance where somebody mm-hmm. told me a, a story about getting into a car accident and he said that he saw the truck starting to crash into the railing and the other car was going hitting it to the right, and his car was headed right for underneath the truck, and he knew he was he was gone, and everything slowed down as if it was in slow motion, and he said he could feel or see, it was it looked like there were uh, was a like a ghostly leg working the gas the the brake and gas pedal and the steering wheel, and everything was in slow motion, and then it just kind of speeded up, and when he when he came to, he was on the other side of this horrific accident, and he was unscathed. So I bet uh, many people have that experience. I'd be willing to bet every listener that he listens to this in mm-hmm. the future uh, will have some kind of story that they'll just be, oh, yes, that's like so, you know my experience. Or, you know, these are the things that are fun to talk about with your friends and you know, it's important to have friends that we can talk to about these things. And these are the things that hopefully will... I do have this sense within me that we, we need to do everything we can to to bring those non-believers into the fold. And, and hopefully uh, stories like this, which are more concrete and will be the first step, toward um, sparking their their own drive to to explore and study other dimensions and the matrix and the galaxies and and so forth mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's my hope well I really align with that and I I share your feelings and if it weren't for the the idea that we care about our fellow beings of light uh, that are spirit incarnate in human form, temporarily having an experience, uh, there then we wouldn't be doing this. So I think that's a, a sign that we are truly evolving when we can care about one another from the heart. And those entities who are not able to do that, those beings who seem to be uh, more self-service to self, Mm-hmm. and negatively oriented uh, are not going to be part of my world in the future. Well, so, we, we sometimes we hope we're segregated from them. <laughs> well, I mean, at some point we, we will cross over yeah. or trans, transfer into another dimension somehow. I, I do feel that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And do you also feel that there is no such thing as death? Oh, of course. Yeah, yes, yeah. I've I've known that since I was a child. Oh, I was brought up that way. Uh, well, I wish we had time for that story, but yeah. you know we're just about out of time. I understand. Yes. And uh, I want to make sure that you mention your the name of your book and the website where it can be found Certainly. before we sign off. It's a, a paranormal reader from Merweed Press. M E R W E D E Press. Dot com and um, it's been a pleasure to be on your show, Lance. You're 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 quite interesting. Oh well, so are you, Gail. So well, I'm glad that uh, we have a mutual love fest going here. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. I I really enjoy talking with you. I, Thank I, you. We could talk for hours, probably. Probably. Yeah. Well, well, best of best of luck to you with uh, you know sharing your information. Thank you, Lance. All right. Okay, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Gail.